Hi there. It's Frank Pleasants with Viral Marketing. What's up, Joshua? You're in for a good interview today with Joshua. Sells homes in Madison. Joshua, how many homes are you going to sell this year? You think we're doing this interview in the middle of November? Uh, what do you think should, your year will end at? Probably right around 25, 26 homes by the time the year's out. If you specialize in a suburb outside of Madison, Wisconsin, what suburb is that? Uh, Stoughton. Stoughton. Got it. How long have you been selling real estate? Uh, about four and a half years now. Okay. So um, Josh makes a good living for himself and he's been a viral client. And I want to share with you how his business comes from his database and how you can model some of the success because at 24 deals, I know you hear, you know, I sell hundreds of homes a year, but 24 deals a year puts you in like the top percentile of realtors in your market without mm-hmm. question. All right. So take me back. Uh, the purpose of this interview today is just to learn how you're getting business, how you're doing business. And so a viral client watching this could relate to your production and where you are to say, you know, what can I do to, you know, make sure that I can have a consistent commission checks coming in, which you've managed to do for yourself, mm-hmm. which is great. So take me back to the problem you were facing before you decided to hire a viral. Take me back to um, where you were, what was the problem? What was the frustration you were dealing with? What kind of triggered this need or this understanding rather of this need that you needed to do a better job or at least put something in place to stay in touch with the database. Take me back to that place and let's start the story there. Sure. Um, So I would say when I looked to uh, implement viral marketing, the reason that I went that route was because my business had been built primarily on existing database. I had done a really good job of building a database of people I knew both before real estate and then, you know, within the first couple of years that I had been in real estate. Um, And I really didn't have a very consistent way to reach out and connect with these these folks. Um, and that was really, I think, the biggest gap. You know, I had worked with a few other, you know, local, you know, kind of freelance people to try to put together some sort of email campaign or some random thing, but there was just some randomness to it. There wasn't consistency, there wasn't a the quality that I wanted to deliver. Mm-hmm. Um, so that really was the biggest, the biggest reason why I, you know, I sought out um, viral and, and wanted to get that implemented in my business. What were some of the options you considered? Um, I looked at, well, I looked at one, you know, doing something that was just going to be a, a email campaign that wasn't going to have the, the video component. Um, I looked at working with uh, just using the standard, you know, Kelly Williams had at the time, you know, kind of a consistent newsletter template, but, you know, it was the same thing. Every agent has access to the same thing. So it was going to be the same message no matter what. And it wasn't really going to be custom to, to me or, or my audience. Um, so I looked at a few, just kind of those basic systems. Um, and then I looked at, you know, a couple of local people that said that they could kind of do similar to what you offer, but not at the scale that I was looking for. What would you say are, um, I mean, there's nobody else in your market doing this that, that I know of, sir. In Stoughton? I don't know. I guess I don't think so. I mean, I, I, mean I'm not, I, I double checked and it came across my screen, but yeah. I mean, what's the population of Stoughton? Stoughton, Stoughton itself is probably about 15,000. I mean, you can have all those people in your database <laughs> Good, yeah. pretty easily over time. You could, yeah. right? Yeah. So you decided to sign up. Was mm-hmm. there any other motivating reasons or people you looked up to, 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 to risk that money with us to give that, give that a go? Um, I did, you know, a fair amount of research. Um, you know, there is a client of yours that uh, um, was a big influence on me. Um, and that's Jenny Woolock out of Tulsa. Oh yeah. Um, one of the very first things I did um, when I got into real estate was I got to go to a mastermind event in Chicago and she was one of the panelists. And so she talked about the importance of database marketing and reaching out to her folks on a consistent basis. And so I started following her system, her journey and, and all that. And, you know, got a chance to actually meet her a couple of times at some Kelly Williams events and topic of our marketing kind of came up and, you know, a few other things that she was doing. And so I always had it in the back of mind that when I had the the time and the ability to implement it in my business. It was something that I, I wanted to do. Um, it was just a matter of right time and the right place to make it happen. Were you scared of getting on video? Not really. Um, I hadn't done a whole lot of the video stuff before, but I just kind of felt like, you know, the old adage I was told, you know, how you look in video is how you look in real life. So I might as well just get over that fear and just do it. All right. So we rounded up your list. You made yeah. your first video. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the, what's the process like working with us and the team? 
Um, process was actually pretty easy. I got paired with a, a great coach who I'm still working with, same person that I started with, you know, what, almost two years ago. Um, so the process was, you know, I got uh, all the uh, tools, I guess I needed everything to be successful to make the videos work. Um, worked with him on you know, kind of the layout, the design that I wanted, the theme I wanted for my, my website and some topics that I wanted to start filming. Um, and then you guys helped me film my first kind of reconnect video and get that first reconnect message out to my database. And that kind of started launching things, you know, just kind of letting people know that this was the new direction I was going to be going with my consistent follow up and that you know, to be on the lookout for the, the two messages uh, a month. And it's kind of just went from there. How do you know this stuff's working? How do you know that you know, you're spending money with us, you're putting these messages out? How do you know this is making your life as a business person easier or um, making the conversations easier or leading to more deals? I think honestly, the number one thing is I have a number of people that will specifically mention, you know, that they've seen, you know, content that's come from me, that they've either gotten my emails or they've seen the videos come through on the Facebook. You know, we do it on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they get posted every time a new video comes out, they get blasted out that way. Um, so I have folks that, you know, either refer business to me or directly contact me for business that have straight up said, you know, hey, Josh, I'm seeing you everywhere. And, I, you know, I love the, the content you're sharing. I've seen videos. I've seen people share the videos with people. Um, so, I mean, just that that connection of validation you know, has been helpful. Great. You get the open and click report of the people that open the emails and yeah. click to one links. Yeah. Do you use that? I do. So tell us about that. Tell the audience about what that open and click report is. Yeah, so that's a great uh, report that gets sent to me usually at the end of the week. Um, I think right now we're on a set where all my videos go out on Tuesdays. Um, and so by usually the end of the day on Friday, I'm getting an email uh, from Viral that has the spreadsheet that lists out everybody that opened the email, anybody that clicked on something and what they clicked on. So that's really helpful too, is to know what they actually clicked on if it was the video itself, or if it was just a blog, or if it was some other content that we included in in the email, um, you know, it tells me who who opted out. You know, great. So at least I know who maybe people that are if they are opting out, and then if emails bounce and all that. So it's a very helpful report just to know how the email is being delivered and then who's using it. And then what I do is it gives me, I think, more validation for following up with people in the database. So I can see you know people that are clicking on stuff, maybe a little bit more likely to do something sooner if they've just opened it than Maybe they're just a little bit more curious, but at least I know that they're engaging with me. And like I said, it gives me reason to reach out. What other marketing are you spending your money on? Um, I do some social media stuff through Keller Williams. So we have our command platform. So I am doing um, Facebook. Some, probably some buyer lead generation with your buyer listings. Buyer lead there. generation through listings and so forth. Um, and then in addition to the other stuff we've already mentioned viral, we are doing um, direct mail. Um, so I am doing a monthly newsletter, I guess it's more like a personal letter that goes out to my top 150 and it goes out every month. And that's, you know, with the help of viral, putting that yeah. letter together. So you, put, you like that letter. So tell me a yeah. little about that. So it was like, you guys do direct mail at viral marketing. What? Right. Why don't Super you crazy. explain to the audience why I recommend that and why you do it and the results of the direct mail aspect of the plan. Sure. Um, so the direct mail piece, and actually it's kind of evolved. Um, originally, it was more of a, a, a newsletter feel um, that kind of highlighted some of the topics. And then we kind of morphed it, I think, this spring into a personal letter. And I think I've gotten more response, positive response to that. Um, but the main reason is because we know that, you know, we can have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people in our database that we're sending these emails to, yet only a small percentage of them are actually going to open the email. I think it's like 15% maybe open the email. Less than that, probably actually interact with the email, and um, you know you're dealing with spam filters and everything else on your email. But what your mailbox doesn't have a spam filter, so you at least know you're going to get it to the mailbox. Now whether or not they open it, it's a different story. But at least you know that you know there's no do not mail list. There's no spam filter on this mail, like I said. So you have a better odds of getting your message in front of people. And I don't send it to everybody. I send it to the top. It kind of can vary from time to time depending, but top 150 people, you know, get it on a monthly basis is pretty consistently sent out so that it arrives around the middle of the month every month and consistent kind of format, just kind of tweaking a few things here or there. But, you know, I just like it because it's just one more way I know I can reach those important people in my database. That's great, man. 
Good. What are uh, some video topics that you found have uh, had resonated the most with your database that you've created? Um, you know, initially it, it seemed to be, you know, people like the market updates, but then I think, you know, so those were starting to get maybe a little stale because it seemed to be kind of the same thing every time home prices are going up, inventory is low, and now's a great time to sell. So as we kind of pivoted to, I think the best ones that people have responded to have been what can they do to their home, good things and bad things to their home when they're getting ready to sell. Um, what are things, you know, I recently did one that was how to save money as a homeowner and some good ideas and I had really good response. Um, the ones that I think target current homeowners um, and give them tips, I think have been probably my best performing ones. Um, so that's kind of where I like to, to kind of continue to focus is on the seller side and the homeowner side. What's the address of your blog? Where could someone go to see your stuff? Um, Madison area real estate journal.com. Great. And we decided to focus on Madison. Why don't you tell us a little more about that discussion that we had? Yeah. So, I mean, as you mentioned before, I mean, Stoughton is the suburb that, you know, I, I live in and you know, do focus a lot of my efforts on. However, um, really Madison is, you know, we're part of the greater Madison area, you know, Madison metro area as a whole is close to about half a million people. Um, so, you know, wanted, and that's the hub of, of our market. So we wanted to kind of use that as, as the main focus on the marketing and the blog. So it gives more of that, you know, full feel around the whole area. Um, and so that's not just so segmented in one, one small town. I'm reading, uh, Stoughton is the birthplace of the coffee break. Yes. <laughs> What's the story behind that? <laughs> The story behind that is so in the eight, late 1800s, we're very we're a Norwegian town settled um, by a lot of uh, Norwegians, and one of the big industries that we had was making uh, wagons. So you know, you know, covered wagons and things that were pulled behind horses pre pre car, right? So there was a couple of big companies in town that uh, had you know made wagons and wagon companies, and they had employed a you know a lot of the women in town would work for. The company and but the, the agreement was they would only work for the company if two times a day they could go home you know i think it was at like 10 in the morning and one o'clock and they would go and home and take a break and they would put coffee on for for their family and so they created they claimed the invented the coffee break because they put that in their agreement we're only going to work with you if you give us a consistent break every day so that we can go home and, and have our coffee that's good where's most of your business come from Let's talk about your lead sources. So 24 deals. Uh, tell me where it's coming from. Uh, my two biggest sources are um, my, my existing database and, and, and clients, you know, referring business to me or people I'm reaching up from the database. Um, and probably the second biggest is actually agent to agent referrals. Um, really? So, uh, at, inside the, the, nas the national network? Yeah, inside the national network. So people are moving to Snowden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are moving to Stoughton or moving to Madison. Um, and it is mostly inbound. And how have you gotten your name out to other agents? Are the videos helping with that? Um, some. I probably haven't done as good of a job of getting stuff out to other agents. I know agents have found it or they've used that as um, if, if an agent reaches out or I see a post that someone's looking for an agent in the Mad greater Madison area, then it's usually the Madison area real estate journal website that I'm sending them or, you know, saying, hey, connect, you know, this, they want to validate information. Um, and I think that shows, you know, a higher level of professionalism and so forth. Um, but most of it has just come through either the Keller Williams ecosystem or through other online you know, groups where, you know, you see people post and saying they're looking for agents in Madison, or I've had people reach out just directly to me because I've connected with them at, you know, back in the good old days when we could go to events and <laughs> connect with people, you know, I made it, made it purposeful to actually reach out and connect with people and search out for people based on, communities that I know have migration patterns towards the Madison area. I wanted to connect with people that I knew were moving to this area and, and, and make those relationships. I think um, you sound very profitable. You're, you're paying referral fees, yeah. you're paying viral, and you have money on some Facebook and maybe pay-per-click ads for buyer leads. Yeah. Those are your three main costs to do business. And what's your typical commission in Stoughton? Um, typical gross commission is around 7,500. Good for you, man. What's next for you? What are your goals next year? Um, well, um, we actually just hired our first employee. 
Um, so we're growing. Got an assistant. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So she starts Monday actually from when we're filming this, but uh, um, she's going to be doing both assistant. Like she, she's licensed, so she'll be doing licensed uh, assistant work and taking on some of the. Oh, that's nice. Um, so she'll be able to help with some showings and things so that we can take on you know a few more clients, um, and I don't have to be running around like crazy just by myself. Um, so we have pretty big goals for next year. Uh, a lot of it will be involved in having her involved uh, with the team. Um, but I would say by this time next year, you know, our goal is to, you know, more than double, you know, our 2020 business for 2021 and hopefully have another, at least one more team member joining us by the end of next year. If you had to sum up your experience in viral, how would you sum up your experience? Um, I think a, a good word that comes to, to mind, honestly, is, is the, it's consistency. And that's what I like about it. Um, you know, it's it's got a very professional look and feel to the marketing that is sent out whether it's the emails or whether it's the facebook ads the videos everything has got you know we try to keep everything looking consistent so if you go to the youtube channel you go to the blog site you go to facebook you kind of see that same branding that same feel and that's something viral helped to put into place um and like i said just you know the team that i get to work with like i said you know, I've had a great relationship with the coach that I've that I've had since day one, um, and he's been instrumental in helping me come up with good topics, helping me get better at the video um, stuff. You know, I'm not perfect by any means, um, you know, but he's very good at just helping me and coaching me through the the videos and keeping me uh, keeping me up to task, which is great. Um, Joshua, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Got a simple business. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. What did you do before real estate? Were you in the military? Did you have a job between then? Um, between then, yeah. So uh, military um, was a lot longer ago than I probably should admit. <laughs> um, but between that, I worked, uh, I would say corporate America, I worked for American Express and I um, was a manager for a, a team that managed a merchant acquisition program for them. And just curious, you decided to say, that, you know, the heck with all that, I'm going to go sell real estate. Last question. What was the motivating reason to go leave that stable, secure job to go do houses? In all honesty, that's not how it really happened. Um, you know, happened is the year that I got into real estate, um, the, when I was with them, especially they went through some downsizing and my mind and a bunch of positions were eliminated. So I was looking for a new opportunity and um, although real estate is something that I've always had an interest in, it, it really kind of came about more kind of happenstance. I, I ended up meeting another agent at a networking event in Madison, um, one that I wasn't even planning on, on going to that day, um, just kind of went to it on a whim and met this other agent. And we started talking about, you know, the idea of getting into real estate. Um, my entrance into real estate wasn't even initially to be an agent. Um, I was going to help him with my experience in lead generation and team building to help him build a lead generation uh, arm of his team. And I actually started doing that for the first three months that I was in real estate, I was an ISA doing prospecting calls, and lead generation calls for him. And then the opportunity to move into a sales role opened up and I jumped at that. And I was actually on his team for well, a year and a half before I branched off and you know started forming my own branding, my own team. Great. Joshua, thanks for your time today. I appreciate the interview. Absolutely. I appreciate you giving me the time. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Frank. That's it. Right. Good job.